There's an issue that occurs quite often with the strategy pattern. The idea of the pattern is that you can swap out algorithms without changing the code that uses the algorithm. For example, you could use the strategy pattern to switch between different file compression algorithms. But what if you want to change some settings that are specific to a particular compression algorithm? For example, zip has a compression level option, but zlib also has window, bits, chunk size, and more. Today, I'm gonna to show you three ways to solve this, but actually only one of those three is a good solution. Generally, before you even apply things like the strategy pattern, it's important that you understand the problem that you're trying to solve. I wrote a guide to help you with this. It's available for free at ariancodes.com slash design guide. It describes my process for designing a new feature or new software application, and it may help you structure your thoughts as well. So ariancodes.com slash design guide. Now let's dive into today's example. We're looking at a trading example today. We have two files, one contains a simulator of an exchange. It's an exchange class. It has a connect method. It has a method for verifying that the connection was established. And then it has a couple of methods. So one is a method to get market data that returns fake price data for particular symbols like Bitcoin US dollar or Ethereum US dollar. Then we have a buy method and a sell method. So normally, of course, these fixed prices here, you would get them from an actual exchange, but this is just to keep things simple for this example and so it can run standalone. The example itself has a main method that creates the exchange, connects to it, and then creates a trading strategy and a trading bot, and then runs that bot for a particular symbol. So the way this is set up is that it uses the strategy pattern for the trading strategy. So there is a trading strategy abstract class that has a method should buy and should sell. We have an average trading strategy and we have a min-max trading strategy. The average trading strategy checks whether the current price is lower or higher than the average over the last few prices. The min-max strategy checks if a price is below or above a certain fixed value and based on that determines whether you should buy or sell. Now, strictly speaking, this is not a strategy pattern because the strategy pattern has a class with a single strategy function. So I'm taking a bit of creative freedom here. If you really wanted to make this a classical strategy pattern, you should probably split the trading strategy into two abstract classes, a trading buy strategy and a trading sell strategy. And each of those would have a single method. But I don't think it makes much sense in that case. It adds a lot of extra complication. And what I'm gonna explain works just as well for this example. The trading bot is not a class that gets in the initialize the exchange and the trading strategy, and then has a run method that for a particular symbol gets the prices, determines whether they should buy or sell, and then call the buy or sell method. What I'm using here, by the way, is dependency injection, because I'm injecting the dependencies of the trading bot on the exchange and the strategy here. And that means that the main function is responsible for creating all these things. So the exchange, the trading strategy, the trading bot, and then it patches up everything near the end. And then it runs the strategy. The issue with the example is that even though the strategy pattern helps separate concerns, there are still hard-coded parameters in each of the different strategies. The average trading strategy has a window size, for example, and the min-max trading strategy has minimum and maximum prices. And that's an issue because actually these prices, they're Bitcoin prices. If I want to change my coin to, let's say, uh, Ethereum, then I'm going to get something really weird. Actually, let's, let's run this example as is to just show you what it's doing at the moment. So currently this is what's happening. It's selling Bitcoin, which is a good choice. <laughs> I'm giving up way too much about Bitcoin. If I change it to Ethereum, like so, so now the problem that actually what I would want is to be able to change these values here to something else. But unfortunately at the moment, I can't do that easily. Now it would be nice if strategies would have extra options to change these values, but how do you set that up? What's the right place to do it? And that's what I'm gonna look at today. So let's look at three possible ways of solving this issue. The first thing you could do is add keyword arguments to each of the strategy functions and then use that to pass parameters. So let's change these strategies so that they accept extra keyword arguments. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add here to the should buy and should sell method, my 
keyword arguments parameter and that's of type float, actually dictionary of float. So let's copy this to all the other should buy and should sell functions as well. So there we have it. And now what we can do is instead of taking this number as a hard-coded value, we can get it from the keyword arguments. So let's say that in uh, the average trading strategy, we're going to have an argument called window size. So we're using get, and as a default value, we're going to get three. And then let's put window size here. Let's do the same thing for should sell. And the min max, we can also get these numbers from the keyword arguments. This is not really needed anymore. And let's add a max price as well. That's 3300. Let's make sure these are floats. So now what I could do is pass specific values to these different trading strategies. There's two problems with this. One thing is that you're losing a lot of typing information. For example, it's not clear it should buy and should sell expect a window size. It's also not clear that min max expects a min price and a max price. You kind of have to guess that from the code or maybe you have to put it explicitly in a doc string. So that's not so nice. Another thing is you can only indicate one type here. Well, Actually, window size is probably more logical that that's an integer and min price and max price should be floats or probably decimal in a production system. So it, this is not ideal. So you could maybe use a union type like float or int, but that's still quite ugly. And there's also something called a typed dict, which might have been useful, except that you can't use it with keyword arguments, unfortunately. So let's look at a second solution that offers a bit more control over the type. And for that, what we're going to do is create a parameters class that contains all the parameters that we need in our strategies. And then instead of passing the keyword arguments, we're passing an instance of this parameter class, and then we can use typing. So let's first create a class called strategy parameters. Actually, let's use a data class for this. And this is going to have a window size it's going to have a min price and a max price. So this is a class that represents the union of possible parameters for the different strategies. So I have window size, min price, max price. And now our trading strategy gets an extra parameter which is an instance of strategy parameters. So let's copy this to all the other should buy and should sell methods. There we go. Almost there, yes, there we go. And now what we can do is instead of having this keyword get, we're going to change that and then rename this to params window size and we can remove this from here and let's do the same thing here and here is the same thing and now what we can do is add extra parameters here for example i could add a strategy parameters with a min price of thirty-one thousand. And I could add a max price of 34,000 or whatever, it doesn't matter. Now you see, I'm able to supply these parameters to my strategy and I have the typing that helps me establish what I'm supposed to provide. So this works, but this also has a problem. One is you now have direct coupling between all the different strategies because they share the same set of parameters. Window size belongs to average trading strategy min price and max price belong to the min max trading strategy so this is becoming a mess because every time you add an extra strategy you're going to need to add parameters here and strategy parameters is going to be a huge collection of all kinds of unrelated parameters and that means that it's still not clear in the trading bot 
which options belong to what strategies. So that also is quite messy. I've seen a few papers that have discussed a generic abstract parameters class and then having arrays of parameter subclass instances. Uh, so you could have an int parameter subclass and a bool parameter subclass, etc. It, it might solve this issue, but it still doesn't feel very clean to me to kind of re-implement the different basic types that are already in there in Python. So it's a pretty complicated way of solving that. And actually it doesn't solve the bigger problem that's in this code. The overarching problem of the two solutions that I've shown you until now is that the run method in the trading bot needs to know implementation details of specific strategies to set those options. So we tried decoupling everything using the strategy pattern, but because of this, the decoupling is completely undone. So let's look at one more solution. And I think this is how you should do it. So I'll remove this strategy parameters monster from my code. There we go. And let's, uh, uh, remove this one as well from the should buy and should sell methods. And then we're going to do this slightly differently. And what we're going to do in this solution is actually attach the parameters options to each of the specific trading strategies themselves. So what we'll do is we have the average trading strategy and we're going to add an initializer that allows you to set these parameters. And we can even use a data class for this to make it really simple. So the average trading strategy is going to have a window size, which is an int and has a default value of three. And then here we don't need parameters. We can just say self dot window size and here as well. And the min max strategy is going to have a minimum and a maximum price. I'll just copy that over from the class we have here. There we go. And now we just write self dot and self dot. And I can remove the strategy parameters instance here because we don't need that anymore. There we go. And now this class is not used. So I'm going to throw that away. And now we have again, clean should buy and should sell methods. Average strain strategy has a specific parameter to that strategy and the min max as well. And where do you set these values? Well, we're going to do that when we create them. So I have here my min max and I'm going to say min price equals 31,000 and a max price equals 34,000. So what's the result? Well, now we have our specific strategy. Each of them has parameters, options that are specific to that strategy. So that's where they belong. It makes the most sense. And we're setting them at a place where we already have the coupling because this is the place where we create the actual strategy instance So there. If we set the options there, it makes total sense because we know at this place that we're using a min max trading strategy. And then our trading bot is again, very clean because it just gets the strategy. The options are already set. So it simply runs the strategy and does what it needs to do. It doesn't need to know anything about how the strategy is implemented, what options the strategy has, etc. This also shows you the advantage of using something like a class for a strategy pattern, because a class allows you to combine data with behavior. And if you're setting options like this, that's data, that's part of, of an object. So a class allows you to do this kind of things. If you would use pure functions for this, just passing functions around that do particular things, then this would be much harder. So in short, being able to combine behavior with data is one of the powers of classes. So don't be afraid to use them. So conclusion, if you want to have strategies that have different parameters or settings, set them in the initializer because that's the place where the coupling happens. If you can't set these parameters in the initializer for some reason, you could add separate methods for getting and setting these values. But you have to watch out that you're not introducing new coupling where you shouldn't. In fact, this might be a reason to reconsider how you set up everything because it points to a potential issue in your design. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you next week.